Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Understanding God's Loving Laws Group and is part of an Education in Love series. In the Session 1 Review, Conclusion and Homework presentation, Mary reviews and concludes the Foundation Principles session and gives some homework to the participants for the following day. Recorded on the 20th of November, 2016, in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Hi, guys. It's been a big couple of days, I know, um, and I know a lot of you are tired. So, and also, we're just about, well, we're already well over time today, so we're going to do this pretty quick. Um, but my, I, do, I do really want to just touch on everything that you've heard in the last two days, just so it's sort of fresh in your mind as you go off for your rest day, um, because you've got homework relating to all of the eight principles that we've discussed with you in the last couple of days. And I feel that this homework is really beneficial in that it can help you deepen your understanding of what they really mean when you consider the homework question, which we'll get to at the end of this review. Um, because a lot of you, did you feel like, whew, okay, oh, oh, you know, we're lots of info, lots of info, and then we're on to the next principle, and so on and so on. And it can be overwhelming, I understand that. But your homework activity actually gives you the chance to sit with it, relax a little bit, really contemplate what it's all about, and understand that these principles are really foreign to a lot of us, aren't they? We haven't really encountered looking at life in this way. And so give yourself a chance to start to absorb what it's really all about. So the homework is designed to help you do that, but also like understand it's going to take months, probably years. We've spent 2000, <laughs> you know, <laughs> could take you a little while. Um, and so don't be too stressed out about it. All right. Now, I'd just like to remind you guys, do you remember right at the very beginning, Jesus covered with you and presented to you this diagram that, we'll, that I'll bring up now. Remember, he talked about God's character, attributes and desires and God's nature. And who, who can remember something that he talked to you about with, in relation to God and God's nature? Lani? Um, that his attributes and desires uh, and character are infinite. Infinite, yeah. And that was something like to really ponder, wasn't it, for all of us? And this idea that God doesn't grow and expand any further and that because God's infinite, we must be inside of God. That was pretty, un sort of something lots of us hadn't considered before, have we? Yeah. All right. And then we talked about the fact that God from God's character and nature, there are principles. God has principles, just like each of us has principles, whether we really think about it or not. These principles are actually a reflection of the, our character and nature, aren't they? Yeah. All right. Then we said that the principles governed law and that these laws exist within a hierarchy, and you're going to learn about that more in the next session. And then within that, so within God and guided by God's principles, exist the laws, and then within that, creation exists, doesn't it? Yeah. All right. Now, who can remember why on earth we're spending this week just talking to you about the principles? So we're not raving on about God's nature, and we're not raving on about the individual laws. Why are we focused on the principles? If we go right at the back to Tess. Because there is an infinite amount of laws, and that's too complicated, and the principles can guide us more, can guide us more. Yes, yeah, so by understanding the principles, we understand a lot about law, don't we, without having to really learn the ABCs of every single law, don't we? In fact, as you'll start to notice, it becomes more intuitive to understand the law once you understand the principles. There's a secondary benefit to understanding the principles. Can anyone remember what that is? If we go to Claudia? I called it secondary, really. It's not in lesser importance. It's probably more important. Um, they have an effect on 
all the laws. So if you understand one principle, it just goes into each law. Yes, especially with these foundation principles. That's true. I was thinking of something else. Does anyone have another idea if we go to Max? They let us know about God's personality and God's character. Yes, yes. And this can be a very powerful inspiration for us to actually begin this relationship with God, can't it? If we understand about God's principles, we can actually deduct a lot about God's character and nature. And as I think you're finding, it's a lot of nice news, isn't it? How God actually is. And that can inspire us. All right. So... This couple of days, we've been talking about foundation principles. And remember, Jesus drew on the the board this diagram about how foundation principles really form the basis for everything else we're going to understand this week. The order principles you'll see actually build upon what you've heard and understood these these past few days. And then the soul-specific principles build upon the order ones, which are built upon the foundation ones. So that's, that's a good thing to know and remember. There's a few other things that, about these foundation principles that you might have noticed. Is there anything that you feel you're noticing in common with all these principles? It might be a bit of a reach, it's a bit of an end of a long day. But <laughs> I'll tell you some of the things I notice about it. One is that there's a big theme about safety, isn't there? and security. Can you see how each of the eight principles really, if we really understand them, we can begin to feel a lot safer and in fact a lot less fearful? Because there's provisions, there's love, there's truth, there's all, it's all in there, isn't it, at the basis of everything. What are some of the other things? I'll just pull up some of the things. These principles form the foundation of the very universe that we exist in. Wow, (laughs) you know, that's pretty incredible that our universe is built upon things like love and truth and economy and function. Yeah. Um, And they allow us, as we said earlier, to understand more about God's nature and personality. They help us to exist. And just as you've been learning about today in terms of scope, you can see how it's very hard, isn't it, to imagine that everything's random because there's so many provisions and so much built into every single thing. If we understand the scope principle, we can feel, begin to feel about that, that it's, it's, you can see how God's made provisions for our existence, our potential existence, the potential existence of everything else. It's quite incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Okay to experience love and to live in a state of safety and security in the universe. Now, these are some of the things that I would love for you to take away from these couple of days. I'm going to briefly now shoot through all the individual principles. (laughs) But if you can understand that these foundation principles really show us a lot of these things, and as we go through the principles, we hear a little bit more about how it does, each principle kind of defines those things. But um, that's really why we've started with these eight principles. Make sense? Cool. All right. Do you want to call them out? What was the first two principles that we discussed? (laughs) Love and truth. Yep. And remember, Jesus said, one can't really exist without the other. They both really help each other to exist and Yeah, to exist. All right, love and truth. What were our next two? Life and development. development. Very good. And really that you can see how they're kind of linked as well, can't you? One is about life existing. The other is about life growing and changing. Yeah. (laughs) Oh. Spoiled it. (laughs) Economy and function. Now, this is some really interesting principles. These are interesting principles for you guys to to consider in your homework activity, and I'll talk more about that later. What was uh, our first principle today? Permanence. Oh, and scope. (laughs) Permanence and scope, hey. So they're the eight that we discussed these last couple of days. Now, we had two other presentations. One of them you've just had with Jesus. What was that? 
human law comparison. And as he said, that's the first of three. And by the time you get to the end of that, hopefully you're getting more sensitive to some of your blocks to understanding these issues of principles and law. And who remembers the very first discussion that we had yesterday morning? Again, it's a bit of a reach. It was fundamental facts. Yeah. So, the fundamental facts, we've, we've pretty much covered all those points in this brief discussion just now. So I won't go through them again because I want to keep moving. Human law comparison. What was one big takeaway that someone took from the human law comparison? What was an aha or something that hit you about it? Kate? Uh, that God's laws reward as well as, um, yeah, compensate in the other direction. <laughs> compensate in a... In both directions. Both directions, yeah. And there's actually a, yeah, a, a result when you obey the law as well as when, you, when you're out of harmony with it. Who else thought that was a pretty cool fact? Yes, everyone. Awesome. <laughs> Something else um, to consider is that if we, keep, if we keep treating God's laws like human law, we will remain unhappy and in pain. And that's because every time we're out of harmony with law, we're sinning. And we learnt in last group, the last assistance group, group two, um, oh, I can't, understanding my loving self, that when we break, that, that sin is the creation of unhappiness and pain, isn't it? Yeah, but we'll talk more about that in the next couple of days. All right, let's talk about the principles. Now, when I... I'm not going to go through the entirety of each slide with you, but I would like to bring your attention to the first sentence at the top of this slide. Love principles envelop God's love around each creation. That's the heart of your principle right there. That's what God wants. And that's, that means that all of God's laws are upholding that principle. It's pretty lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've got to move on. <laughs> Truth principles. And again, I'd just like to draw your attention to the first sentence. Truth principles envelop God's truth around each creation. So we know, given this principle, that all of God's laws are ensuring that that happens. Life principles. Life principles transfer God's life force to each creation, principle and law. Now, that was a bit of a, a big discussion, wasn't it, the life principles? Who, who had a big takeaway from that one? Something you hadn't thought of before or something that surprised you? Something you really took on, Laura? Laura? Sorry, I didn't know you picked me. Um, <laughs> the thing that surprised me the most was that when we suppress an emotion, we not only suppress our own life force, but our other half can't be close to us and it affects the whole environment as well. Yeah, it affects the, the life of all, all things with the life force in. Yeah, awesome takeaway. Yeah. All right. Development principles. Again, let's just look at this first sentence. Development principles allow each creation, principle and law to evolve, grow and change positively. Again, you begin to understand just how much God loves us, hey? That God, is create, God has these principles that then govern all law, which says that he wants us to grow and change positively. And in fact, he's actually enforcing that. Yeah, all right. Economy principles. This is one where most of the earth is totally out of... Well, they all are. We're all out of harmony with just about every aspect of these foundation principles. But this is, a, this is one where we feel so righteous in the way that we, um, that we break it. All right. Economy principles ensure that each creation and law economically uses resources. Now, who had a takeaway from that one? Something that surprised them or something? Rachel? Do 
Just the equal value put on time. Yeah. Yeah, it was the three aspects, wasn't it? But t so time, matter, matter and energy. energy. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of us don't value time, do we? And actually, if you consider it, it's the, the one that's sort of finite and limited. Once, it's, once you use that time, you can't get it back. Yeah. Whereas the others, are, a lot of them are renewable. Yeah, how precious. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Function principles. Function principles ensure that each creation and law has many functional purposes. Now, this is the one where we, a lot of us saw that, gee, a lot of my creations only have one functional purpose, and sometimes there's not even a functional purpose. <laughs> I just make stuff, because I think it's pretty or something. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really good one to consider when you do your homework question, when you do your homework activities. All right. Per so now we're getting on to today, and these, some of these principles we had a bit longer to discussion about, didn't we? So... Permanence principles. They mean that all creation can rely on permanent law. And this is another area where I feel like we can begin to feel safe in God's universe. Things are predictable, aren't they? That, you know, I know that God has got a sort of a, 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 a whole framework and operation of law operating... Uh, governed by that principle, that means that if I really am sincere or if I really do one thing, I'm gonna, I can be certain of the results. As long as I live by the other principles, it's going to be a good result as well. Barbara? Um, the development of trust with that law is a really um, beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can trust. Um, well, it brought home to me that I can, if I start looking at it this way from this angle, I can start trusting God more. Yes, yeah. And a lot of our human law comparison showed us why we don't, we don't have this feeling of permanence, do we? And that's like a breaking of trust between us and God. So, yeah. Knowing about this is a great way of... Um, yeah, of starting to challenge the human law hangover that you'll talk about in the next session. All right. Scope principles. Now, you guys had some awesome discussion about scope principles, which is really good, because you're going to see that scope principles are essential for what you're going to learn about in the next couple of days. And I, I'll introduce them to you at our very start of our next session. But um, you're going to see that understanding scope principles. Now, who at the start of Jesus' presentation thought, I've got no idea? <laughs> okay, so about 95% of you. And who at the end of the discussion felt like, I've got no idea? <laughs> cool. If we're working on percentages, I like your honesty, there's five people who's still feeling pretty clueless. Hopefully homework can help you. But as I said, um, this is a process of understanding. And sometimes even when you hear about the, the further principles, we're going to talk about hierarchy and governance and things, it might help you to get a little bit of more context for scope. And so just be open to learning and it'll come clearer. But... The key takeaway is that scope principles guarantee creation is governed by new, by, sorry, by law, and that new creations and laws can exist. That's the guts of scope. Now, there's lots of ways that it happens, and that can get pretty confusing, but really, it, it really guarantees that all creation is governed by law. And that the potentials that exist will also be governed by law. And those new laws are potential. So anyway, we won't go there. <laughs> All right. So, we did good. Let's talk about homework. Because this is, I'd just like to spend five minutes here, if that's okay with you guys. Just because um, I'd like you to get what we're really um, aiming at in your homework question. So it's just one question for each principle that we've discussed, each of the eight principles. The question is, how am I living in or out of harmony with each of the foundation principles? 
Now, who already just feels a bit unsure about what that's all about? Yep, a few of you. Yep, there's no worries. So, what I might do is give you a few examples of how you might answer that question for a couple of the principles, and then I'll explain some other things to think about as you're considering this question. So, if we, for example, look at development principles, how am I living in or out of harmony with each of the development principles? So, when you consider your homework, you can think of um, this question in three different areas: the physical side of life, the emotional side of life, and the spiritual side of life. That makes sense, or the aspect, or you know. So, if we think about how I'm out of harmony with the development principle, you might say, "Well, I force nature to adapt to my physical creations and my errors." So, if we go back to the development slide. Remember that the development principle defines that if I was in harmony with it, I would allow each creation to evolve, grow and change, and grow and change positively. So, if I'm forcing physical creation like nature or my environment to adapt to my error to meet me in my error, can you see I'm not encouraging growth and change? And if we think about that in terms of something emotional, what about my living in fear? Am I encouraging my own development and growth? No, so I'm out of harmony with the principle. Or if I'm shutting down change and growth in my partner, or my children, or my other family members, if I don't want them to change, I don't want them to take risks, I don't want them to challenge me in some way, and while they're doing that. Then I'm out of harmony with this development principle. Does that make sense? Yeah. If I think about it in a spiritual context, well, really, if I'm rejecting God's way of growing, which is the ultimate way to grow, the fastest way to grow, and the way I can grow continually, then I'm really out of harmony. Or even if I judge it. If I judge the aspects of God's way, I'm really out of harmony with the development principle. Can you see that? Yep. So this is another thing for you to to consider when we talk about being in or out of harmony with the principle. Remember, God looks at all of you, which includes your thoughts, your attitudes, your emotions, your desires and aspirations, and your actions. So when you consider, am I in or out of harmony with this principle? You can consider, are my thoughts, <laughs> are my attitudes, are my emotions, are my desires and intentions, are my actions in or out of harmony with the principle? Make sense, Laura? Would you be able to just the scope one is the one that I'm having problems with, you know, in or, in or out of harmony with scope. All right, let's have a look at scope. I've got another example here to help you. All right. So if we start, if we keep the mic with Laura, thanks, Karen. What are some of the inbuilt rules of your soul? Do you reckon? It's all right. Might be putting me on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all right. It's all right. Well, one of the inbuilt rules is that emotion should flow, and when emotion flows. We grow and change, and it's released, isn't it?、Mm -hmm. That's that's how things happen. And if we shut part of the inbuilt rules, we shut it down. We create an energy block, which creates pain and problems in our spiritual body, problems in our physical body. So that's an example of an inbuilt rule of the soul. So you can see if I'm out, if I'm doing any of those things, shutting down emotion, I'm immediately out of harmony with scope. Makes sense, and that would mean also out of harmony with development, out of harmony with life. That they、yeah. all, as you're going to see with the foundation principles, basically, if you're breaking one, you're pretty much breaking them all.、Um, yeah, I understand. Yeah, <laughs> good question though, and I'll just give another sort of more of a physical example. So, there's certain inbuilt rules in timber, isn't there? If you expose it to the weather, it decays. 
And remember, Luli asked about us painting our house or her painting her house or whatever. Now, if I'm trying, that really by doing that, I'm trying to override the inbuilt rules that govern timber and some of the external rules that govern how atmosphere interacts with timber and all those kinds of things, or how atmosphere exists and weather and things like that. So every time I'm trying to work against those rules, I'm breaking the scope principle, aren't I? Does that make sense? So if you think about the way thing, God created things to work, if you like. So if you think about a rainforest, there's so many rules and laws that govern how things decompose and how things grow and how things, how things exist and reproduce and all of those things. Every time we get in the way of that or try to force it to be a different way, we're trying to force the rule, our dominance over the rules, we're breaking this principle. Make sense? Cool. All right. Uh, Joanne? Um, I also had difficulty with the scope principles. And so I was wondering in terms of the inbuilt, is this good? Yes, it's good. Um, and the external, like an example, like when they created the hydrogen bomb, like in the scope principle, is it not the creation of the bomb or was it the intent of what was they were using it for was breaking the, the, the principle? Well, the science that was, the, the intention to discover the science that the bomb was crea based upon, we could say that's probably not in disharmony with this principle, is it? Because it wasn't designed, that it wasn't discovered with the thought, as far as I'm aware from the people involved <laughs> who are now still in the spirit world, are now in the spirit world, they didn't intend for this to be a weapon of mass destruction. Right. So they weren't breaking any scope principle. In fact, they were almost in harmony with development. They wanted to discover what are the potentials in creation, you know, what's right. possible. So, but, and they actually, in order to do it, they just, op they, there were potentials that already existed that they enacted, which is really, there's still external and inbuilt rules based uh, that are, that govern what happens. But the, the thought, the attitude, the desire, the intention, the creation of the bomb, now that, the thought, even the idea to create it, just the idea, guys, that's way out of harmony with every foundation principle. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so the scientists didn't break the, 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 the rules, but the people who want, wanted... Well, it depends on if you're talking about the scientists and engineers who created the bomb or the ones who discovered the science on which oh, the bomb okay. was based. Well, we will get to technical. So I'm good with that. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. Thank yep. you so much. Do you guys much. understand that? Yeah. Thank you yep. so much. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, I don't mind answering more questions, but we are well over time. As long as you're like, if anyone needs to go, it's okay. So if we go to Karen and then we'll go to Lurleen. I'm just hung up on the word spiritually. So every time you say spiritually, it's seeing, asking what, how God sees it. Is that what? No. Oh. Maybe I'll give you another example. Jesus. Yeah. Can, can I just give a quick answer to that? Yeah. Spiritual is all about love. So, okay. so if you think about spiritual examples, well, how are you, like the love issues are from God's perspective, the spiritual examples. Yeah. Mm. And it's love from God's definition. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you take love out of the emotional box and put it in the spiritual box. Well, in in the end, love yeah. is an emotion. So it, it's all. C this yeah. is just a way of helping you guys. Remember, everything we're talking about this week is a way of helping you guys kind of conceptualize things, understand things. So we just sort of thought of those three categories to help you think about things a Thank little you. bit more in depth. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Lolene. Um, it's about um, continuing the um, thing about the rainforest. If, if it's a very... Could we... I'm going to review the homework with you 
in a couple of days. So I'd, ra I'd prefer not to turn this into a review of the homework. I'd like for you guys to have your personal reflections and then we can talk more about whether your reflections are in and out of harmony. What I'd like to do here is just have you grasp what we're asking. Does that make sense? Yeah. So does anyone have more questions about clarifying what it is we're asking? I'll give you one more example. You all right? All right. So let's go to truth, one of the most foundation of all foundations. Yep. So when we're out of harmony with the truth principle, if we think about it in a physical sense, we might be just be doing stuff we don't want to do. Yeah? In an emotional sense, well, your whole facade breaks the truth principle. <laughs> so you can see when we, when we talked about developing my loving self, we talked a lot about facade. And if you've got one, you're out of harmony with the principle. So these are the kind of things to think about. And you can be more specific about, you know, this is, remember we said on our slide that the, the homework is only useful if you guys learn something, learn something from it. So it's not about browning points or anything like that. It's just to help you understand the principles and hopefully help you, un help you grow as well. Yeah. So you can be specific. And then the lack of desire for God's truth in an emotional way, to receive God's truth is a way that you're spiritually out of harmony with this principle. Now, some of you, a lot of you we saw today, the strong dislike of any personal truth even. Um, but God's truth is like the absolute truth about everything. Um, the universe as well as yourself and everything. So if you're rejecting that, you're out of harmony with this uh, truth principle. Does that give you guys some clarity on what we're after there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as you can see, it can help you really reflect on what's this principle all about. So that's our desire to help you guys with that. So I'll see you now. We're supposed to have a conclusion, but we're way over time. So we're not quite finished with our foundation principles. I'll be back with you first thing in two days' time. So what's that, Tuesday morning? and we'll review again what we learned in Foundation Principles. I'll go through the homework with you to help you just reinforce what those principles were about. And then I'll um, introduce to you Order Principles, which is our next session. So thanks so much for your participation, guys. I know it's a really long day, so you did great. See you in a couple of days. Have a lovely um, day off. <laughs> Offish. <laughs> yeah, yeah.